everybody. Welcome to Sparrow's Nest Farm. Um, it's getting pretty bright out here today. This is the first really nice day that we've had in quite a while. And I am taking full advantage. Um, I think I finally got the beds pretty much all filled up. Or at least um, the ones that I currently have because I keep adding more. <laughs> I think I am ready to go ahead and get some planting done. We are expecting some storms tomorrow. I'm hoping they won't be too bad, but I figure with seeds in the ground, or seeds in the containers rather, um, they should be fine for the storm. I do still need to get tomato plants and pepper plants, but I will do that after the storms roll through this weekend so that they can get a chance to get established um, before they get really challenged. So let's take a little walk through the garden real quick, um, take a look at what I plan to plant and the uh, various uh, containers we're using. All right, so as you can see, the number of containers has grown since the last video. Let me walk you around and show you what's going in them. This one, I just finished filling today. Um, it needs some manure on top, but it's pretty much ready to go. However, I'm not planting anything in here until after the storms because this is going to be hot peppers. Um, the onions are going anywhere and everywhere. I can find places to stick them. I've never grown onions before, so this will be a first try for me and I like to try things that are new so we'll just see how those go. I'm pretty confident they will do all right. Uh, this container is actually the water trough from when we had our cow and although we very much loved our cow she was difficult. So she went to freezer camp and she was very delicious and now I'm going to repurpose the water trough to grow things. Over here we have a kiddie pool. Uh, these are just the cheap ones you can buy at Walmart. You can see this one kind of had a flag pattern on it. Um, I got them two summers ago when I was babysitting and the kids used them and loved them and played in them a lot and now I'm not babysitting anymore, so I wanted to repurpose these. So this is going to be my lettuce bed, and I'm going to try and do this without making it difficult here. Maybe if I'm in the shade. So these are various lettuces that I'm going to put into this bed. There's some mustard greens there, some mescaloon. Just all different types. Now these are all pretty much going to be used as cut and come again baby greens. So I'm going to be doing something that I saw Stacy talk about in a couple of couple of videos ago. Um, I will try and remember to put a link to it. But she said she just gets a bunch of seeds in her hands and just distributes all the seeds out. And then as they come up, she cuts them down and more uh, gene, more seeds germinate and come up and she cuts those down and works out pretty well for her. So I want to give that a try so I can just get a nice mix for my salads. In this spot here, and these smaller containers, they're not in their permanent homes. They're just place keepers until we get some rock to go down over this weed fabric because we haven't done that yet and it desperately needs it soon. <laughs> We're getting it soon. Anyways, um, I'm going to be growing herbs and flowers in all of these small containers. So this one here is chives and cilantro. I've got two different types of parsley, curly and flat. Tarragon, which I've never grown before, so that'll be new for me. This one is sage and dill, and what's this one? The wind blew it. Oregano. 
And then right next door is going to be my mint bed. Now, all of these pretty much, um, I actually bought these new. They were a couple bucks a piece at one of the big box stores. You can find them most anywhere. Um, they're just really cheap, easy to fill. And for smaller things, these work pretty well. This was an old canner. Somebody found it at a garage sale and thought, oh, Jen loves to can, so I'll just take this to her. But it was rusted out in the bottom, <laughs> so it wasn't usable. And it's been sitting around waiting for me to figure out what I want to do with it. So I'm planting it. Okay, so back to the mint bed. I've got three different types of mint in here. We really love mint, but mint can be a bear if you're trying to grow it in ground. It will take over everything. So I'm putting it in one of the salvaged pots. These pots are used for um, when people are uh, giving minerals to cattle. This would have been filled up with a uh, mineral block, and then when they're empty, the farmers don't really have anything necessarily that they do with them, so they'll usually get rid of them for cheap or free. So if you have any local dairy or beef farms in your area, don't be afraid to knock on their door and say, hey, do you have any mineral buckets that you would be willing to get rid of? So that's how I got that one and this one. This one's going to be my kale bed. And as you can see, I couldn't decide <laughs> which varieties I wanted to plant here. So I've got two different types of Swiss chard. I've got collards. I've got one, two, is it just two types of kale? Yep, two types of kale. And then I've got some spinach, which may end up in the salad bed, just because this is going to be crowded with all of that. Yeah, I think I'm going to put that in the salad bed. There we go. Over here, growing echinacea, which is great for immune support, which is important in this time. And then I've got two different types of nasturtiums I'm growing. Nasturtiums are an edible flower. They're really beautiful. They attract the pollinators and you can put them in your salad. Next to that, I've got chamomile, borage, or borage. I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and lemon balm. So the lemon balm and the borage are both medicinal, but they're also going to be really beautiful flowers. Can you see the print on this? That's one of my favorite things about botanical interests is the drawings of the plants are just, just breathtaking. Or sorry, that's bee balm, not lemon balm. Bee balm. All right, so these five here were flower pots that over the years people have given me different plants in them and the plants have since um, died or been given away or repotted. So I had these empty pots, which I'm going to use. Over here, this is our tub. When we bought this house, it was a fixer-upper. Um, it was a bank foreclosure. The, the house was just a disaster. It really was. Um, it was not really inhabitable. The floors were a mess. The bathroom was just... I didn't even want to walk into it when we looked at the house. Um, one of the first things that we did was have that bathroom just torn completely out and we completely redid it because it was, it was gross, y'all. It was bad. So in the process, we had this old iron tub in there that had to come out. I wasn't keeping it. 
at least not in there. <laughs> uh, it came down to the basement during the remodel and there it sat because the it was too heavy for us to lift and get out of here and the trash bin that we used when we did the remodel was full it didn't have any room and we didn't have anybody to help get us in because it's an old cast iron tub it's pretty heavy so it sat there since we did the remodel on the house and i decided i would go ahead and plant in it so here's what i've got in that one in the tub we're gonna grow some where's my hand there it is we're gonna grow some zucchini some patty pan squash and yellow squash now last year i had squash bugs real bad and none of my squashes did well i got a couple of zucchinis but the patty pans and the yellow squash it was just a no-go the the squash bugs were so bad so i'm going to be working on keeping real close eye this year as they come up and try and keep control of that and i'll show you guys um, some of the things i've learned since last year to deal with that problem but this is my squash bed and then as we come over here, these are, these were an Aldi find, Oops. and you just spin it around, and it makes compost. You put your kitchen scraps in there, and just give it a spin, give it a spin every day, and eventually you have beautiful dirt that comes out that you can top your beds off with. All right, let me get around here. I'm tripping on things. This was a chick brooder that we built the first year that we had chickens. Um, it worked really well. We raised a few batches of chickens on it. And this here was actually on our front door. And I hated it. I hated it there. So I took it off the first year we were here. And that's another thing that just kind of sat and waited for me to figure out what to do with it. Um, the beauty, <laughs> I always think the beautiful thing about a homestead is there is always some place to reuse the things in your life that accumulate. I have rarely had something that just literally never found a use. And this I thought was going to be one of those things. I've actually been waiting for it to get hauled off to the trash because I I didn't want it. But it sat here long enough that I found a use for it. In the brooder bed, I still need to finish filling it up. I need a couple more bags in here. However, uh, it is starting to come apart. We didn't design it for this use and it worked great as a brooder, but once we started filling dirt, you can see where it's kind of coming apart there. So we're going to do some things to strengthen that up before we finish. And then we've got the door cage. And these pieces of wood here, they're actually going to go. Let me see if I can do it and hold the camera at the same time. So, so the door cage actually needs to be pushed into the ground more. And then... I don't know if you can see, there it is. So this, there, is that gonna stand there? Oh, yay. That will be attached to it so that not only will it protect anyone from catching themselves on that sharp edge, which I know that I will, but it will also just give it a little more stability because I am gonna go grow some bush beans I'm going to grow, or not bush beans, I'm going to grow some pole beans. Some black turtle pole beans on this and use it as a trellis. And then in front of that, probably there will be some onions in here, but I'm going to have more peppers in here. Um, we like peppers. <laughs> and I'm never very good at growing them, but gosh darn it, I keep trying. All right, here's another one of those little cheap 
planters that you can get. It's going to have thyme. And then I told you guys the story of the canoe in the last video. So we do have it full of dirt now. And I'm going to be putting bush beans in the canoe. There's a package there. And then there's a partial package down here that I want to finish off. That is going to be Blue Lake bush beans. And we actually really like the Blue Lake variety. Um, they're pretty tasty. So I'm looking forward to those and getting some green beans canned up. All right, let's go here. Okay, let's talk about this fence for a second. This fence was free. We just had to go and pick it up from a dear friend who bought a new house and it had this fence out front and she didn't like it and she said somebody come and haul it away. So I did <laughs> because I can't resist. And it's been in a few different places around the house, but I think it's found its permanent home here at the edge of my make-do garden. And these planters, which were also given to me with plants in them at one point, they will go up against the fence once the rock is in. And they are going to have peas. These are peas that we saved from last year's garden. I love, love, love shelling peas. That's my favorite thing. And this will have peas. And this will also have peas. Uh, in with the peas, I am also going to put sweet basil. And I may pick up some different basils. I want to try Thai basil. And there's a red basil that I've seen that I want to try. So those two may get different types of basil, but they're going to have basil in with them. All right, and over here, we've got some savory and some cumin. If you like the Mexican food flavor, cumin is your friend. Cumin is what gives Mexican food that amazing flavor that is just signature Mexican food. All right, so let's talk next. This is the other kiddie pool. And as you can see, we have Wit's favorite, which is French breakfast radishes. Actually, I love those too. And this is sparkler white tops and cherry bell radishes and then i'm going to have some purple top turnips and then my favorite is detroit beets so i've got two different packages of detroit beets but then i've also got this fun package let me open that up this is a gourmet blend so there's just all different types in there so this will be beets and radishes, and probably onions, because let's face it, I'm throwing those everywhere. And that brings us to all of the big blue tubs, which are also salvaged. I found those on the Facebook marketplace, except for one. One was from our wedding. We had a keg in it. But the rest of them I found on Facebook marketplace. Two of them were heated waterers that were used for watering horses through the winter, and then two of them were just utility buckets, just 16 gallon utility buckets, just like the one that I had already. So those are going to have carrots and tomatoes. Um, that's your uh, companion planting uh, genius move. Carrots love tomatoes. Uh, the beauty of that companionship is by the time the tomato gets so big that it's crowding or shading the carrots, the carrots are pretty much ready to pull out. So you can use, you can get double duty out of a small space by using companion planting. I've got a few different types of carrots we're going to be doing this year because I like to try different varieties and different things. This one's Scarlet and Nance. I don't think I'm saying that right. I don't know what kind of tomato plants I'm going to get yet. I have to go 
check out the farmer's market this weekend and see what the locals have grown. So I'll do an update on that. This one is Kaleidoscope, and this is seed tape. If you're unsure about planting, try and find these seed tape packages because it's really easy. You just pull it out, put it down in the ground, cover it, and water it. And you don't have to worry about spacing or anything like that. Just let it do its thing. This one has a different package of Scarlet Nance. And you'll notice that uh, all of my seeds come from various different companies. This one has Danvers. I usually like to buy the organic as much as possible. Um, I like Baker Creek, but I haven't ordered from them in a while because Botanical Interest is just a little bit cheaper, but they don't have quite the selection that Baker Creek does. Uh, a lot of these, if they're from a non-organic company, is because they were given to me and I don't mind. I'll plant them, I'll plant everything. All right, and that one is Carnival Blend. So, that is what I will be doing today. And the look of this garden is going to change quite a bit once we get the, uh, the stone in to fill in all of the spaces. We'll probably pull all of these little containers out and these guys and we'll fill in with stone. We got to get more weed barrier to finish this section here. So that's what I'm going to finish working on today is getting everything that I have laid out the seeds in the dirt and watered and ready to go. Um, even though it's going to rain probably a lot tomorrow, I still want to give them some water today just to get them started and hopefully they don't get drowned. Uh, one more thing I wanted to show you. I'm terrible at labeling things and I'm terrible at remembering what I planted and where. So, I don't know if you can see this. It's a garden map. And I highly, highly recommend if you're like me and you struggle with remembering and especially next year when I want to change things, I can make notes on my garden map, say this worked, this didn't, I liked this, I didn't like that. And next year I can do things different and make changes and always be improving on what I'm doing. So I thank you all for joining me today. I need to get busy. Take care. God bless. the storm um I do still sorry I need to stop umming so in the brooder bed I still need to fill it up but we actually I'm tripping on stuff Ooh. 